So this is, this is new, and um, it's uh, such a, an opportunity to hear from you what your questions are about this thing we call God, mm. spirituality, source. And um, so, you know, it's a bit of flying without a net, but if you know me, you know that's my happy place. <laughs> um, vulnerability is a powerful thing. And uh, I appreciate the vulnerability that each of you who filled out a card engaged in to ask your questions. And um, yeah, we're just gonna pull out some questions and see where this conversation takes us. So in a way, you could consider this sort of like a slightly kind of like a mini class, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so if you take a class with myself or Shelly, you will you know, this is, these are the kinds of things that we explore. I know there are some of you who are here for the very first time, and I know there are seasoned ministers, Rev Sally. <laughs> I can't say that without saying your name, love. No. You mean so much to so many of us here. Yes. So there are our senior, uh, beautiful ministers, uh, emeritus, and, and so just know that I will do my best in this conversation to, to cover the basis, sort of from A to Z. Mm -hmm. All right, let's okay. do it. All right, I'm a little nervous. Uh, are you? Yeah, oh, don't be. In a fun uh, way. I'll be fine. No, not for you. <laughs> I'm teasing. No, I'm totally kidding. Funny, God is in the funny. We talked okay. about that at the retreat. I love mm. this question. Yes. Oh my goodness. Seriously? Okay. Yeah. Oh. And I think it's a great question to start with, Rev wow. Shannon. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, the question, Rev Shannon, is how do you need the spiritual community to support you? And before she speaks, I'm going <laughs> to just say that this question is critical to the health of this community, that this question provides a strong foundation for all of us to do our work in. And so this question might be the most important thing we talk about today. Oh my word. I love this question. Wow, it's already started. <laughs> Thank you so much to whoever wrote that question. Um, how, how can you support me? It's just, um, I, here is what I will share with you. If you don't know already, I love you with my whole being. When you grow, I grow. Mm -hmm. When you are vulnerable, I am vulnerable. When you are courageous, I am courageous. When you show up with a willingness, you give me permission to do my thing. And so I want to start there. I want you to know how much you mean to me. I don't get to say that very often. Yeah. And in that, I want you to know that I am deeply dedicated to this community. I'm deeply, deeply dedicated to this community. And so, my request is that as best you can, to give me the benefit of the doubt. Mm. If there is a talk that I give and you don't like it, please know I did my best in that offering. And you don't need to tell me. <laughs> you know, really, I promise you, every time I'm here, my prayer is, Spirit, give me the strength to get out of my own way so you can move through me. Yeah. And so a lot of times what I plan on saying and what I do say are two very different things. Because we're having a connection and a relationship on Sunday morning. You're feeding me your energy, and I'm receiving that and doing my best to, to respond in the best way that I can. So 
look, I'm going to make mistakes. <laughs> you know, I'm going to make mistakes. It's just life. And what I want you to know is I always have the best intention. I truly do. And I promise you, I promise you, I do my best. Mm. And when I fall short, and I will, I ask for your grace and your compassion. Um, and you know, the other thing that I would say is I want you to know, uh, this is vulnerable. This job and people who are, who, who are my colleagues, we talk a lot about it. It's this um, interesting relationship that we have. My love for you is so great. And sometimes, especially at first, if you don't know me, you know, some folks will kind of like duck out and not want to say hello. That's okay, you're where you're at. But please know I'm a safe place to land and I am here for you. I'm genuinely here for you. I don't bite. <laughs> I really love. And, um, and sometimes, sometimes my job can get a little lonely. Do you know? I have incredible people around me. I have an incredible family, a in very close-knit group of people who support me in my life. I want you to know that I'm here for you in relationship. So say hi. Please, <laughs> there's many of you and there's one of me and those of you online as well. I would love to get to know you so we can be in relationship, in, in relationship that serves both of us. And I don't mean like I'm lonely. I don't mean it like that. I just mean sometimes my longing is to be in relationship with you. And I want you to know, I, this is my gesture. So please, if you're comfortable, introduce yourself, say hi, give a hug if you like. That's how you can serve me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. She's also really fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK. Oh, I love this question. How can we practice maintaining the light when faced with life challenges? Mm. How do we maintain that light? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Lord of mercy. So, this has been quite a week. Mm -hmm. Planetarily, yeah. this has been quite a week. And I know, you know, every one of us we're all energetic beings. There's so much happening in the world right now. There's so much pain happening in the world right now. What's happening in Israel and Gaza, the Middle East, Ukraine, all, all, all of the places, right? It's a lot. And if you are sitting here or you are listening to this or you're watching this, something has brought you to this place, right? To know the spiritual truth, to remember the spiritual truth. And what I can tell you is that the spiritual truth that is light serves and supports us, especially during these times. I have been very teary all week. I shared that at the retreat. You know, as, as an empath, and we all are, we all feel deeply. How could you not be, mm -hmm. right? And so when we are faced with challenge, how do we maintain the light? That's the question. The first thing is the light doesn't go anywhere. The light is always within us. It is a breath away. It is on the breath. It is between the breaths. Mm -hmm. So the one thing, the first thing is to remember that if you are in a place of sadness or challenge or difficulty or fear, if you can even just take a breath and just literally remind yourself, the light is here too. The light is here too. And that helps to serve as a bridge just to get us back to that, that place. Because the thing is, when we have challenge and difficulty and pain, the absolute worst thing, the most toxic thing, I think, we can do is bury it. Mm -hmm. and la-la-la it away, you know? 
Now, it's really important to protect yourself. I am a person, as many of you know, I feel it is my job to know what is happening in the world. As a minister who, you know, social justice is, is paramount in my ministry, I have to know what's going on. And I will tell you, this week, I found myself getting the basics mm -hmm. and having to, to turn to and remember and be and feel and live in the light so that I could facilitate a retreat this weekend and be here today. Right? So be gentle with yourselves, and if you can remember that light never goes anywhere. It's always standing at the ready. We get to be human, but as in our humanness and our grief, I invite you to set a timer if you can, you know? And if it becomes something that you feel you're not being able to go back, to wake up, to remember, to snap out of, to get out of, to step out of, to walk out of, I invite you to call a practitioner or a therapist or a trusted friend. You can access all kinds of guided meditations online. And just my invitation is to remember that despite this difficulty, this pain, this violence, the highest truth is that we are the light. Mm -hmm. And the more that we can remember that, the more that we can turn to that, the greater the experience of light will be on the planet. In the face of this, the highest truth is that I am the light, yeah. that we are the light. Yes. And actually, if you didn't see Shelley's last talk, she speaks about this beautifully, so I invite you into that. Yeah. What do you think happens after the physical body dies? Oh! How much time do you have? <laughs> So, you know, this is what's so beautiful about the New Thought teaching is we get to choose what feels right and what aligns with us. So I'm very Eastern in my, in my um, practice of New Thought. Um, that may come up later, I don't know. But um, I very much believe in reincarnation. That's just, uh, I believe our soul, the same soul that we've had, uh, and then we're ta we talk about this in our journey of the soul class that I'm doing right now. The same soul that, that, uh, that I am, as Shannon O'Hurley, has been my soul for millennia, for thousands of years and lifetimes. And um, so, and you can be in this teaching and, not, and that doesn't work for you. You know, that's absolutely fine. We teach that heaven is a state of mind and that we are here to experience heaven on earth and if you have ever seen a baby be born or looked out into an ocean or cuddled a little puppy on the floor, you've been in heaven just for that nanosecond. What is, you, what is your take on it? I'll even go so far as to say that not only do I believe in, in reincarnation, I'm about to, like, some of y'all are going to get up and walk out and say, I can't listen to Shelly anymore. <laughs> I'm not 100% convinced that we reincarnate on this planet. I think that the universe is so broad and so vast and that our growth potential is so huge. Why would it be limited to this little blue dot I love that. in the universe? I love that. So that's, that's Look me. at this that's ministerial me. student right over here. What? Well, and woo-woo, like lo loving, loving yeah. it. Loving it all. Yes, yes. Um, we have so many questions, yeah. Rev. This is really beautiful. Okay. Um, Oh, how do we see... I do that every time, don't I? <laughs> I thank you for the awareness. Um, Heckler <laughs> Row here in the front. Musicians. How do we see the divine consciousness in those we disagree with? Mm. Oh, this is juicy. <laughs> These are good, y'all. These are really good. These are good. How do we see... I want to be... Can you... Yes. I want to look at that to make sure. I, I want to get it. Okay, how do we see the divine consciousness. consciousness in those we disagree with? Okay, how do we see the divine consciousness in those we disagree with? I think, so I want to I frame this in a way that's, a, because I could feel the, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> let's put this in a framework of, of practically applying the spiritual truth to this. Yes. Okay. Um, I think there are 
off, off, I think there are, off the top of my head, three levels. I may change my mind tomorrow. Um, but I think there are three levels of being in relationship with folks and, and how easy it is or how challenging it is to be in relationship with them. So let's take the first, let's take the, uh, the, the, the person, um, let's say it's a family member who is so um, philosophically opposed to what you stand for and are and, and believe in anybody, right? You know, we've had so much of that uh, since, um, you know, 2016, really, um, and then through COVID, um, just made it even more difficult. So the first thing that I would share is that for people like that, for whom there is just blatant fill in the blank, blatant racism, um, folks who are, uh, people who are anti-LGBTQIA, I mean, we're talking, you know, really, 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 really challenging. My invitation to you is to, and I talked about this in 2020, some of you may remember this, to love them over there. To love them, to love them. You don't have to like them, you don't have to like what they do, certainly. You don't have to agree with them, you don't. But you can still, from that place of light, love them over there and you can remember that despite their behavior and ignorance for all the fill-in-the-blank reasons, they too are light. Mm -hmm. Ernest Holmes said, God is no respecter of persons. There is no more light or God in me than there is in them. And if you can remember that, that will get you through Thanksgiving. <laughs> so that's the first thing. And it's really minimal engagement, minimal engagement. There's no need, right? There's no need. Unless they ask you and they're genuinely open, and if they're that person, they're not in that first category, they're in the second category. Then we have a second category. The second category of, let's just say, family members are people who um, maybe they, they think you're a little woo-woo or a little out there, um, but they are on your side. You know, they, they, they wish you no harm, they love you, and they're, and they're maybe a little bit open, right? But they say things that are offensive and difficult, but there's some, it's like there's some clay there. There's, there's a willingness to, to be formed, to have a formation of something different. Do you know people like that? They have a lot of questions, like they ask a lot of questions about who we are here, but they would never come, okay? So at that table, <laughs> again, remembering their light, loving them. My invitation is to recognize in that moment that there is nothing broken within them. There is nothing that needs to be fixed within them. It is not our job to change their opinion. It is, that is their journey. It's just like in our teaching, we don't proselytize. We don't knock on doors and say, have you found new thought? <laughs> you know? Because we're all on our own soul journey, our own incarnation of soul growth and soul evolution here. And if you have someone who is asking you questions, my invitation, and I have learned this the hard way, is tread lightly. <laughs> Do not dive in yet. Shallow pool. Think, dip your toe in, right? Because otherwise, honestly, it can be a huge turnoff. No one wants to be preached to. No one, especially if they have a, a very different worldview or cosmological view. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you can engage in conversation. And if something bubbles up that is deeply offensive, deeply difficult, deeply hard, mm -hmm. you can recognize their, their, their consciousness. You can recognize their light. You can recognize the truth at the center of them. And some, something that I might say is, you know, that, that, is, that statement is confusing to me. Can we go a little deeper? Can you share a little bit more? And a lot of what it is is holding space and remembering the truth of them. And if they start preaching, I will just jump in and say, I so love that you are passionate about what you are passionate about. Do you have a question for me? <laughs> no, really, do you have, is there something you wanna know about my faith path? I'm so happy to share that with you. Oh, you wanna know what I think about life after death? Well, get this, honey. I believe in reincarnation. What? 
You know, you can, you can make it fun, you can lighten it, but don't dive in head first into the deep pool. And the whole time, it's just remembering that consciousness that their soul, too, is millennia old, if you subscribe to that. And they are learning in their own divine time for themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if anyone at any point says something deeply egregious or, or, or challenging, I will always, I will always uh, shine the light on that. I will always say, you know, I, I need you to stop. That's not okay with me. Would you like to know why? If not, it's okay. Right? Clarity, love, gentle. And then you have a third category of people who are just like, what is this thing? What is this? I don't know anything about this. And you can meet them where they are, you know, one conversation at a time, invite them to come here. And, um, you know, I think it's important to realize that there are a lot of people who have no idea that we exist. There's a lot of people out there who know, who sense that God is something other than a grumpy man in the sky but they don't quite, they haven't, they're, they're not around it. They're not exposed to it. So we have an opportunity to model unconditional love and hold that space for them. What would you say, love? Last week, I was reading an article from the Greater Good Science um, mm. uh, from out of Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And there's a new study that came out that talked about how um, the people with the best connections to people who are not like them or see world, the world like them or think like them, the people with the best connections are people who have intellectual humility. Yeah. It's about having some intellectual humility. It's about, it's about not assuming that we have all the facts. Yes. And that our way of seeing it is the way of seeing it. Yes. And we, when we can approach conversations and people from that place of love mm -hmm. and with intellectual humility and curiosity, it changes everything. Yes. And the boundary of loving them over there is what um, helped me to survive COVID. Mm -hmm. I will just let you know right now. Yeah. Loving them over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's what we needed. Yes. Good. Mm -mm -mm. Good. Okay. Good. Well, some of y'all have some small handwriting. Next time, bigger <laughs> handwriting. <laughs> Does saying the rosary interfere with the teachings of new thought for sinner spiritual living? Oh, what a great I love this question. question. Does saying the rosary interfere with the teachings of new thought? What a perfect, beautiful, wonderful question. I grew up Catholic. There are times I still say the rosary. Mm. There is no wrong way to pray. That's right. It has to do with how you experience the divine or God. I think the rosary is beautiful. There are prayers from the Jewish tradition that I love from... You know, all, all you know, I mean, all across, in any sermon or talk or offering up here, I always do my best to try to bring in something, even if it's a quote from a faith path that is different from ours. We are an inclusive tradition. Everything that we are is built from all of these other great uh, faith traditions and mystical traditions and metaphysics. That's, that's, the, that's the sum of our teaching. And so, honey, you say your rosary. I love that. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm going to hijack the process oh. and ask you my own question. Okay. This was not our agreement. That's all right. But I have the microphone. <laughs> Um, I'm seeing that we're running short on time, and I know that you've been ministering all weekend, but I'm wondering if you have a little bit left in the tank to minister to our hearts about Israel. Yeah. 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 So a couple things, and then we'll guide us into a process that we'll do together. So the first thing... Reach out to your Jewish friends. Yeah. Reach out to your Palestinian friends. Mm -hmm. This is a really hard time. And 
I'm going to invite you to deeply feel your feelings about it and to remember the light at the center of every being, every being that is impacted by this in any way, shape, or form. This is our time where we get to, we get to practice what we teach here. We get to lean in and we get to affirm peace at the same time feeling the grief. To not feel the grief of what is happening is to bypass all of it. And then we miss everything. And we do not want this history repeated. Are you with me? Yes. We get to participate in the peace process in this teaching. So to that, I'm going to invite Darcy up and Adrian and we're gonna move together. So you know, song music is, is deeply important to me. It's many, it's me, in many of the ways that I experience God and the divine is through music. And so I have asked Darcy to um, bless us with this prayer that is sent, set to music. I think probably all of you know it. I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. And when the song is finished, Adrian, I will invite you to continue playing because I'm going to take us into uh, some deep prayer for the world. And so as, as Darcy begins this, I invite you to allow whatever it is that wants to come out, come out. We talked in the retreat about uh, being teary, and that's fine, that's good. Tears are flowing. It's a good thing. It's a sign of your love. So if tears come, let them. All right. Say 
And so joining in this place of oneness, this place of peace, this vision of peace, I affirm and know for every being on this planet their light. I affirm and know for every being in the Middle East, in Israel, in Gaza, their light, their light at the center of their being. I affirm and know with everything that I am on behalf of every one of us that this light is growing on the planet now. Despite what is happening, there is a light that is being born from this because there is a clear response of love to this from so many places and so many people in our grief and in our sadness. We are remembering the light and therefore we are uplifting the light. We are bringing the light. We are the light bearers. And we join every beautiful being in every religion and faith path in this truth, those who gather in churches and mosques and synagogues and ashrams and temples and retreats in sanctuaries of every kind, of every kind in every corner of the earth Together as one, we affirm light on this planet, love on this planet, and peace, and more peace, and more peace on this planet. I bless all of the beautiful souls impacted by this violence. On behalf of each one of us, I affirm and know that love is right where they are even though it may be impossible to see. There is love here, there is love there, there is love everywhere. There is light, we are made of light, we are light stuff. All of us, every being, every place, every nook and cranny of this planet is of light and I affirm this light is rising more brightly, more powerfully, more strongly. And it reveals truth and it heals the hurting places. The love that is in our hearts in this moment is love that is felt in all of the hurting parts. We affirm that we are energetically connected and so I know with my whole being that God has this, love has this, light has this. And together we stand in this peace. We stand for this divine promise of peace. We allow our light to move out into the world as a healing balm, as a salve, as grace itself, as love in action. And whatever it is that we may be feeling within ourselves this day, this light reveals the truth of that too heals that too, loves that part of us too. I celebrate our vulnerability and our courage and our willingness to be here, to do this holy sacred work, to stand for peace, to love one another, no matter who it is, whether it's loving them over there or loving them right here. It's the same love and it heals all. And so from this place of healing, I am so grateful for this opportunity to be together. I am so thankful 
for this opportunity to speak this truth, to be in this truth, and to stand for peace. I'm so grateful for this beloved community here and online. I'm so thankful to be on the planet at this time, to be the beacons of light that we have come here to be and to become. I affirm this for every one of us. I know love is the highest, and I know that love has the final word. I rest in this truth with great gratitude. I allow it to be, I allow it to become. And so it is. <laughs>